Hi guys, uh, welcome into this video. Um, I'm gonna be bitching about a few different things. How to get internet while you're on the road. Uh, you don't need one of those Wi-Fi Rangers $750. Who's got that kind of money? And I'm gonna be talking about how to use a T-Mobile SIM in a MiFi device. $35 a month under the family plan is what I pay. So stay tuned, folks! It's all coming right up! What started me down this path was um, seeing a review uh, by the Depres. They talked about getting this new uh, Wi-Fi Ranger, and it's pretty slick. Um, it does exactly what I'm talking about as far as load balancing, but look at this price, $750, and you don't need to get something like that. I mean, this is pretty dumbed down, and it's easy. You can just kind of plug and play with it, but I mean, if you know what you're doing it, and you watch a YouTube video or two, you don't need to spend that much. If you're in R and if you're in an RV, you could literally buy one of these and just buy a consumer grade router. I mean, shoot, I even have one of these. I go I got this one, it was $17. And you just plug in that antenna that I just showed and then into this right here, and then this you connect your devices to this right here. That would be fine. It basically does what this does, but um, they did write uh, this Wi-Fi Ranger company. I guess they wrote their own um, firmware for uh, the uh, for this device right here. So this is the I think this is the actual router board that they're using, and then they just have their custom firmware on there. But look at the price of this hardware, and what you're what you're buying is their their custom firmware. What I saw is a lot of uh, the big YouTubers, uh, big names in YouTube, like, you know, Road Warrior. We've got RV Geeks here. I've seen Gone with the Winds talk about this product. Anyways, there's a lot of big time uh, RVers that say that they get these things and they do an unboxing and they talk about all the, f the features that these things offer. But you, you never see a follow up on these things. Um, there was one by RV Geeks, but it wasn't very detailed. It was um, just saying that they were able to access some Wi-Fi from the side of the road, which is great. Not that you can't do that with a $50 device. Um, you don't need to spend $750. So I search the internet for Wi-Fi Ranger reviews, and you can see it's abysmal. 67% uh, gave it a one star. And they offer great technical support, but it sounds like their firmware that they use is just laying on top of the, uh, the Miro Tech router board API. And um, I don't know, it's a little bit buggy from what, reading the reviews here. And it's not like this is a silver bullet. It's going to, or, you know, it's not like a magic wand. You're just going to be able to get um, Wi Fi anywhere. There are physical limitations. You know, this is physics. Uh, there's, you're not going to be able to get a Wi Fi signal that's like a mile away or, or what have you. I have a little bit of a background into this stuff. And here is the official Wi Fi Ranger uh, page here. And they make these uh, wild marketing claims here. Um, multi-WAN bonding? Well, I don't think so. Uh, here's a comment I left for them. At 202, it says multi-WAN bonding. Uh, the underlying hardware Microtech supports only load balancing using a round-robin approach. And I understand Wi-Fi Ranger uses some algorithms to route client requests to a WAN based on the most available bandwidth. So that's just called load balancing. It's performed on the layer, layer 3 of TCP IP the uh, OSI model, whatever. And so you'd only see performance gain when there are multiple devices in use. So you're not gonna see like increased speed um, like you would with multi-bonding. So load balancing, not to be confused with aggregation or bonding, which is combining the speeds of all your WAN connections i.e. if I have a 1 megabit DSL connection, which I do here, and then I have maybe a 1 megabit uh, MiFi, my router here, and um, that wouldn't make for a 2 megabit connection. So bonding needs, uh, can, bonding can only be performed at the ISP level. So um, it's physically impossible to do what they're claiming here, multi-WAN bonding. This is really a typo. They meant to say not bonding, but load balancing. And uh, their tech support is great. They got back to me within the day, and they concurred with what I said. So really, I just wanted to point out, they make these wild marketing claims, 
I don't think the product lives up to it. I haven't seen a review, a video review on YouTube um, that's really critical or actually goes into um, having owned it after a couple months, what their results are like. I don't think this is like a magic wand. I don't think it lives up to the marketing claims. It definitely doesn't live up to that $750 price point. Not to say that they don't produce some really uh, quality stuff. It's not really that they're pretty. That's just a, a common router that you can get off the shelf for you know sixty bucks, and then this right here, uh, yeah, it's IP sixty seven whatever. So you can put it up on the roof. It's it's waterproof. Can take a torrential downpour, and they've got this pretty slick antenna. This is nice. Uh, it's got um, you know it's it's designed so that um, if you hit like a tree or something like that, the antenna is going to go down. But I mean, really, are you gonna? Do you really need to pay seven hundred fifty dollars for that? I know it's maybe a little overkill. And the Dupre's here—they're known for uh, getting products and then doing reviews on them. I think they get the products for free. Um, you know, I don't know the case with this Wi-Fi Ranger if they got a deal on it, but um, I'm just saying that it is a little suspicious. Uh, I wonder if a lot of these big time YouTubers are getting promotional deals to review these products. I know that when I called into the Wi-Fi Ranger technical support to talk about, ask about uh, that bonding feature, um, he wasn't sure um, on the phone if it was, if it did that, um, if it did actual Wi-Fi bonding. He needed to talk to a developer, but um, he did. Uh, I did express some interest um, in reviewing one of the products, and they were really keen on that, and they wanted to know my YouTube channel. Um, and then they would get back to me uh, when when their next um, product comes out. So I don't know. I know they ha they have a lot of beta testers and whatnot. I'm just wondering, did that influence um, these reviews, these initial reviews that we're seeing here? I would like to see an actual review, um, having used it for a couple months. Is it really worth that worth that price point, or can you just build one yourself for half the price? Um, you know, even like one third the price. I mean, obviously, the advantage is that it's pretty much plug and play, from what I understand. Uh, I've got a little bit of background in this stuff, and if you're willing to watch a couple YouTube videos, uh, it'll definitely pay for its time because watching YouTube videos is going to save you a lot of money in the long run. Honestly, to get the same uh, connectivity that you would uh, with their top of the line product, $750, 50 bucks right there, and then also you need a router.